don't think the character, no, but I think some of the look of Austin Powers apparently derived from some photos of me back in that era. Look it up. Poor guy looks just like Austin Powers. The bad teeth and the, and the square black glasses, which I, of course, covered from Buddy Holly. Crikey again! Austin Black is not from Peter, who nicked it from Buddy! So that may be... Exactly. So, so you know, you know what I'm saying? That may be what, what defines me in the future. But uh, people do ask, uh, you know, what, what it was like being present at, at so many, you know, formative moments, I suppose, or historical moments in, in rock and roll history. And the answer is that you, you never know at the time what's going to be an important moment and what isn't, or at least hardly ever. But there have been a couple of occasions when even at the time I felt a certain confidence that this is kind of cool, this is, I may be in the right place at the right time, this is sort of important. And I'll, I will share one such with you. Back, to go back to the beginning, when Paul was living in a house in Wimpole Street, it was number 57 Wimpole Street, and my bedroom was the top floor on the right, that window there, and as you can see I had a ledge outside, which apparently sometimes I would sit on unaccountably. Um, yeah, it looks a bit reckless. Um, my bedroom was immediately to the right through there, and Paul's bedroom was the one next over. But in the basement, there was a little music room that my mother used to give private music lessons when she wasn't teaching at the academy up the road. And, uh, and Paul would use it sometimes when she wasn't using it. There were no guitars in there, it was just a small upright piano and a piano bench and a sofa. Um, and I do recall one occasion, very early on, Paul had just moved in, when John came over and they went down into that music room for a couple of hours, uh, as I say, without getting the guitars which were up in Paul's bedroom. So, uh, and after they finished what they were doing, Paul stuck his head up the stairs and called and asked me if I wanted to uh, come in and hear the song they had just finished. <laughs> so thus it was that I came down, sat on the sofa, the two of them sat side by side on the piano bench, and I had the privilege of hearing this song for the very first time. Oh yeah, I can tell you something I think you'll understand When I say that something I wanna hold your hand kind of amazing. And they turned to me and asked me what I thought, you know. And I said I thought it was really good. Um, what you actually do when you hear something that good is immediately ask them to play it again, which is what I did. It's just like when you used to get 45s and as soon as it was over you put the needle back to the beginning and play it again. And that was my reaction. Um, and there is, even though it's only rock and roll, and I'm not trying to be pretentious, there is something kind of magical about being there at the moment of creation of truly great art. Because you kind of go, Am I losing my mind or is that one of the best songs I've ever heard in my life, you know? Um, so it was a genuinely exciting and, and interesting moment. Uh, another fantastic song I heard for the very first time in, in my house was the song that Paul wrote for us called Woman. Some of you may know this story, yes. but at the time people were saying, oh, if it's got Paul McCartney's name on her, it says Beatles, <coughs> it'll automatically be a huge hit. And he wanted to see if that was true or not, so he asked, uh, he suggested that he might write it under a pseudonym. He, he, he wanted to write it under the name Bernard Webb and see if that made any difference. And uh, 
So, you know, when he said, you know, what do you think? And I write it under a pseudonym. I, I asked Gordon what he thought of the idea. And we said we would love to try and have a hit without your name on it. <laughs> so we did it and it was a big hit. Thanks very much, world. It's called Woman. After all, over 50 years ago, this record was not good. We do have the words up on the screen, so even without the official bouncing ball, we expect you to know them. Um, and secondly, uh, I wanted to explain something. Because I was puzzled when I was putting this show together. I noticed that if you look at me in the old album covers or on the Ed Sullivan show or whatever, that I don't look exactly the same now as I do on those pictures. And I went, that's very strange, why, could, why would that be? But, by rummaging around at home in a drawer where I keep old memorabilia and other old crap, uh, I found the solution. 
because I did find the original glasses that I wore back in the day. These are the real ones, I show you. And, and, and you'll notice that as soon as I put these on, I look exactly the same as I did back then. And even more importantly, so do all of you. So, I thought I'd wear the magic glasses to end the show with this song, Well Without Love. Two, three, four. Ladies and gents, I think you're the great. Enjoy that show! Yeah.